Welcome back to my video series about how to build a sub 250 gram, three inch freestyle drone for absolute beginners who have never built a drone before. This is a video series. So if this is the video you were looking for, then great. But if you just stumbled across this video, then feel free to watch it. But if it feels like you're coming in in the middle, that's why. There is a playlist linked in the video description below that has all the videos in this series. And if you're not sure what the heck's going on here, then you should go back to video number one and. Hopefully it'll all make sense. A whole bunch of the content in the video that you're about to watch is borrowed from my previous build series where I built a five inch drone. I just couldn't bear to re-record hours and hours of content that was gonna be exactly the same, except instead of me holding a five inch drone in my hand, I'd be holding a three inch drone. I'm going back through these videos and anytime there is t a content that is unique to the three inch drone that you're building right now, I'm gonna, re I'm gonna record that and I'm gonna edit it in. But if there's a whole bunch of this video where I'm talking and I'm holding a five inch drone instead of a three inch, don't let it confuse you, it still applies to what you're doing. In this video, we are gonna set up the motors. And this is a really important step because if the motors aren't doing what the flight controller expects them to do, the whole quadcopter can't fly. Like, think about it. This motor has a propeller on it that pushes this corner of the quadcopter up in the air, right? That's how propellers work. If the quadcopter wants to turn to the left, these two motors need to go faster and these two motors need to go slower. But if the motors are not where the flight controller thinks that they are, or if the motors are spinning the wrong direction, they're not going to move the quadcopter in the direction that the flight controller expects, and the flight controller won't be able to fly. Basically, the quadcopter will go whoop, it'll pop up in the air, it'll flip over, and usually it'll automatically disarm itself because it's like, hey, something's not right here. But back in the old days, before they invented the automatic disarming, it would literally just blah, 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 up into the sky and maybe not come back. So we need to get our motors spinning the right direction. And the first thing we need to do is we need to decide whether we want motor direction reversed or standard motor direction. And that's more commonly referred to as props in versus props out rotation. I want you to look at the front two props here on this diagram. Do you see that when we select motor direction is reversed, the front two props are going outwards, kind of like doing a breaststroke, okay? And when I select uh, disable motor direction is reversed, the standard motor direction, they're kind of coming inward, like, like get over here, give me a hug, right? Um, that's props in versus props out rotation. There are pros and cons to both. A lot of people these days prefer props out rotation. So I am going to break from my tradition. I always build my quadcopters props in rotation. That's because that's just how I've always done it. And I'm not convinced for especially larger quadcopters like this, that props out really has a big advantage, but I'll, let's go with the trend. Let's buck my tradition and go with the rest of the world. And we will choose props out rotation and we will hit save and reboot. The next thing we need to do is select our ESC and motor protocol. So the flight controller talks to the ESC. The ESC makes the motors spin, but it needs to know how fast to spin the motors. And the flight controller is in charge of how fast to spin the motors because the flight controller is in charge of like actually flying the quadcopter. The motor protocol is the language that the flight controller uses to tell the ESC how fast the motor should spin. And there are a lot of options on here that you, unless you're super interested in like the history of quadcopters, you can just freaking ignore. The, the ones that you are most often gonna be dealing with are D-Shot 150, 300, or 600. And the short explanation is that the D-Shot 600 is faster and lower latency than D-Shot 300, and D-Shot 150 is the slowest, highest latency one of them all. We're gonna select D-Shot 300, and that's a good middle ground to select in most cases. If you want a deeper discussion, that's a topic for another video. The next option we're gonna look at is bi-directional D-Shot. And this is another one of those topics where a full discussion would be way too much detail for this sort of beginner tutorial. But the short version is, Bidirectional D-Shot makes your quadcopter fly better and you always want it to be on, but not all ESCs support bidirectional D-Shot. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna enable bidirectional D-Shot and we're gonna agree to this warning. If you enable bidirectional D-Shot, you need to be aware that this number here needs to match the number of magnets in your motor. You can actually, you can turn the motor over and look 
and you can see there are magnets around the outside of the bell and you could literally just turn it and count them, but don't worry. For basically all motors in the sort of five inch quadcopter class, 14 is the correct number, that's why it's the default. You would really only need to start thinking about this if you're building very large or very small quadcopters. I do wanna let you know that option exists because someday you'll build a quadcopter with a motor that doesn't have 14 magnets and you'll hopefully remember, oh wait, I need to go ahead and check and count the number of magnets and put that there. And today is that day because our motors only have 12 magnets. So we're gonna change that number to 12. This is a three inch quadcopter, not a five inch quadcopter, Joshua from the past. We're gonna hit 12 and then we're gonna save and reboot. And what we will see next will tell us whether our ESC supports bi-directional D-shot or not. If we look here and we see 100% errors, that means that the flight controller is not able to talk to the ESC. And that could mean that the ESC doesn't support bi-directional D-shot. But in this case, what that actually means is that the ESC isn't powered up. So obviously it can't talk to the flight controller. It's not turned on yet. So now we're gonna plug in a battery. And when we do that, hopefully we will now see 0% errors. And that means that the ESC does support bi-directional D-shot and we're good to go. If you plug in a battery and you still get 100% errors, your ESC, yours will support bi-directional D-shot because you bought the kit. But sometime in the future, you may plug in a battery, you see 100% errors, you would need to turn off bi-directional D-shot and you just wouldn't be able to use that feature. Except you may have noticed that you have 0% errors even though you didn't plug your battery in yet. And the reason for that is that your flight controller is an all-in-one flight controller where the flight controller and the ESC are on the same board. So when we plug in USB, it powers up both the flight controller and the ESC and we get 0% errors. We still need to plug the battery in in order to spin the motors, but the ESC can still talk even when the battery is unplugged. Now that we have 0% errors, we know that the flight controller and the ESC are talking. The next question is, will the motors spin? And if you messed up the soldering of your ESC, this is gonna be the part where the smoke comes out. But hopefully that won't happen. We're gonna plug in the battery. Oh, I unplugged the battery for a second. If you unplugged it, plug it back in again. And with props off, I didn't tell you to put props on, so I've been assuming this whole time that your props aren't on. If for some reason you installed your props, a word of warning, never have both the battery and the USB cable plugged in at the same time with the props on because when you've got the USB cable plugged in, you're configuring your quad. And when you've got the battery plugged in, the motors could spin. And if you do both of those things at the same time, then you could spin the props and chop things up and damage things and hurt yourself. So here we go though. Props off. I understand the risks, but the propellers are removed. We're gonna enable this. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on the master slider and I'm just gonna click one click and then press the up arrow and we should see the motors begin to spin smoothly. They'll twitch, 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 and then they'll spin smoothly. Fantastic. And I can just uh, pull that down to stop them. Before we continue with the video, I'd like to remind you that the single best way for you to help make sure that I am able to continue making content like this, which hopefully you value, is to join my Patreon. Patreon is a website where you subscribe to me for as little as $2 a month. That's the minimum amount, just $2 a month. Uh, uh, someone's vacuuming. But join my Patreon, get access to my Discord server, and just feel good about supporting the work that I do here. If you watch my content regularly, uh, then hopefully, eventually, you'll come to a point where you go, this guy's earned my support. If today is that day, join my Patreon at any level, at any dollar value that you pick $2, pick $5, pick $10, pick whatever amount you think is fair for the amount of value you get out of my content. There's a link down below where you can click through. And if today's not the day, if you're like, oh, I just wanna watch the video, you've probably already skipped ahead. But uh, yeah, keep watching the content. I'll keep making the content. And I hope that day comes. Now that we know the motors are spinning, the next step is to make sure that the motor order and the motor direction are correct. I'm gonna turn off the I understand the risks option, and then I'm gonna click the reorder motors button. And chances are good that this is just gonna be right out of the box. But even if you know that you did the build normally, I always go through this step because if you get it wrong, the quad won't fly. It doesn't take very long. And if you just run this step, it's simple insurance against something a mistake. So we'll hit reorder motors. I understand the risks, propellers are removed and I will hit start. And then what I'm gonna do 
is I'm going to look at which motor is spinning. In this case, it is the front left motor. I am going to click that motor. Back left, front right, back right. That's it. We hit save. We are done. That step is done. The next thing I'm going to do is run the motor direction wizard. And uh, I understand the risks. All propellers are removed. Then there are two ways to do this. One is individually, where you just set each motor direction individually. And one is using the wizard. Um, if you do run the wizard, be aware that the wizard resets all of the motor directions before the wizard runs. So sometimes you'll have a quadcopter that you set up previously. The motors are going the right way. Then you run the wizard and suddenly they're not going the right way anymore. Wait, I thought it was configured correctly. The wizard resets the motors before it uh, runs. I think the easiest way to do this is going to be to use the wizard though. So we will hit wizard and start spin motors. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to check the direction that they're spinning. And it's very important that you check that the motor direction matches this diagram. That's why this diagram is right here on screen. If you work from memory and you think to yourself, oh yeah, I built all my quadcopters props out, and then you just make the motors be props out, that doesn't mean the flight controller thinks that your motors should be props out or props in. So always look at this diagram and compare the motors. Now, a lot of people just like to touch the motors, but I don't find that to be very useful because I just feel, I can't always feel what direction they're spinning. Another trick you can use is to touch the motor on the side and watch which direction it pushes itself. So that motor is clearly spinning counterclockwise. Another thing you can do is get like a piece of paper, like here's me with like just a dollar bill I found, and you just put the piece of paper and you see which direction the motor spins counterclockwise, and that is not the right way. That's motor number three. I'm gonna reverse motor number three, and now it's going clockwise, which is correct. Motor number four, correct, is going counterclockwise. Motor number two is, it's a little hard to tell. Hang on, let me get my dollar bill back out. Okay, motor number two is going the wrong way. I'm gonna reverse that. It's now going the right way, and motor number four is going the correct way. Stop motors. Once the motors are spinning the correct direction, the very last thing I like to do is I will just, once again, I understand the risks, raise the master slider just a little bit and double check them just to make sure, it, like, I don't know, no surprises. And that's it, your motors are working correctly. To recap, what we did in this video is we decided whether we were gonna have props in or props out rotation, we selected a motor protocol. We enabled bi-directional D-shot. We verified by looking at the error percent that our ESC supports bi-directional D-shot. We then used the reorder motors and the motor direction wizard to check the motor location and motor direction was as the flight controller expected. There's a playlist down in the video description with all of the videos in this build series, including the next one, which is probably where you're gonna go next. I'll also put a card on screen linking to that playlist if you can see cards on the platform you're watching on, and I will see you there.